All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, in today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you would go about uh, creating a game in a functional programming language. Uh, we are working in Clojure, and um, we talked earlier a little bit about how to uh, how how you can work using the language and the different transformation functions available to you and that sort of thing. And I thought I'd sort of walk you through a little bit about how you would go about solving real-world problems uh, in this language. So what I've done is that I have sort of created a, a small game here. Uh, it's a missile command clone. And what you can do is you can sort of fire countermeasure missiles up like this onto the oncoming missiles from your missile batteries down here, the red ones. And um, when a missile hits another missile, it creates a flare explosion. And you can sort of chain these together so there's, there will be a, a chain reaction if fla other flares hit flares. And you're basically trying to defend your cities, those blue circles down here, from the uh, approaching missiles. And the game ends when all your cities are destroyed or you don't have any more missiles that you can fire from your missile batteries down here. So you can see there's a small set of dots here that represents the ammo count in each missile battery. And once that is depleted, you can no longer defend against the missiles, so the game is over. So if you get, if you lose all the cities or you are out of ammunition, it will be game over because you can't do anything about it anymore. So um, just sort of wanted to talk a little bit about the terms here. We basically have, um, we have missiles that are approaching. These are the red ones coming in from here. Uh, we have the countermeasures, which are the blue ones that I'm firing from. Um, let's see. There we go. That I'm firing from the, from the base here. Uh, it will fire a missile in, in the spot that I click, and you can see that it chooses the closest missile battery to fire the missile. Um, and <coughs> this is the way this is, is built is that I'm creating a, a canvas and I'm drawing the game onto that canvas every frame. And the game state is represented as a single uh, map data structure that contains all the state of the game. And every frame we run, uh, we have an animation timer that, that updates the game and that runs at 60 frames per second. And it, every, every tick, it um, calls a function that takes the old state and returns a new state. So it takes the old state, makes some calculation based, based on the state of the game, and returns a new state. And we store this, this state map in a, in a reference called an atom. And an atom is one of the very few mutable uh, data structures or, or tools that you can use in, in, in Clojure. And essentially what it is is that it, it's basically just a reference to a thing. And you can safely point this reference to another thing from a, any thread. So it will do a compare and swap when you change it. And if the compare and swap fails, because it was mo uh, modified from another thread already, the compare and swap will be reattempted with the new value from the atom. So if we look at the code here, I'm just going to put some line breaks here so we can scroll further down a, a little bit. Um, what we do is when we, st when we start here, uh, we create a window and configure it. And we create a canvas. And we create a timer. And the timer will run at 60 frames per second. And every time the timer runs, we call a function called swap 
on the state atom that contains the state of the game. And this will run the function that we supply here, the tick function, on the contents of the state atom and return the result of that and also swap in the result so the atom now has, no, has that result in it. So it has sort of changed the reference inside the atom and also returned it. So we update it like that and then we give the new state and draw it onto the canvas using the draw function. So this happens every frame. Uh, now I also need to be able to interact with my game. So I have a, 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 an event handler here, which I attach. When the mouse is clicked on the canvas, uh, we also do call swap on the state atom. But this time we call the function called fire countermeasure at the point where I clicked the mouse button. So I, I call the fire countermeasure function. It takes uh, this original state as an argument, the state map of the game, and it also takes an additional argument, which is the point where I clicked. Uh, and then we just do the regular stuff of showing the window and starting the timer, and we configure the timer to stop executing if we close the window. So let's have a look at this uh, fire countermeasure function. Remember, the fire countermeasure function takes the original state of the game as the first argument, and it also takes a target, a, a position target. Now, in order to talk about what the state of the game is, we need to sort of look at that a little bit. So let's, let's have a look at what the, the, the map look li looks like that we're going to be we're working on. If I scroll up here, we can see that here is the, uh, I have set up a bunch of functions that uh, create the state of the game. So um, I have a function that creates a battery, and that's also represented as a map. It takes um, a position of where the battery should be placed. And these batteries are the red ones down here. And um, in order for this thing to be able to, I, I want to be able to scale my user interface. So I've used a coordinate system that is uh, where zero is down here. And oh, it's probably up there, actually. And uh, one is down here. So there's like a zero to one uh, coordinate system in using floating point. So when I, when I make a battery, I just supply it an X position uh, on, on the X axis where it should place it. And it automatically places it in the correct at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and as you can see, it just uh, creates a, a, a two element vector here. Uh, with the x position and the one as the y position, so at the bottom of the screen. It, it configures the battery to have an ammo count of 10 uh, and takes the position, and it also has a radius for the circle. We use a very simple way of detecting if something hits by just doing a circle intersection. So uh, everything is circles, basically. So calling this function will re return a map with a battery. Um, we also have a, a similar function that makes a city. And you can see that the cities are here. And it also takes an X position to place the city on. And the city doesn't have any ammunition. It only has position and uh, radius. Uh, so using these two functions, I can, com I can make a complete map that contains the entire state of the game. Uh, th this is called make state. And in here, we configure a map that contains a list of batteries, a list of cities, a list of countermeasures, a list of flares, these explosions here, and a list of missiles. Um, and what this does is it creates a setup of the three batteries at these three screen positions, uh, maps over those three screen positions, and calls our make battery function, and generates a new list that contains all those, those batteries. Uh, it does a similar thing for the cities. And just to demonstrate here, I can try this out by calling this um, particular thing. If I call make battery with these positions, you can see that I get back a, a list of all the different maps that contains the batteries. 
And I don't have any uh, countermeasures or flares on missiles yet. Uh, they're, they're empty list. And, but I do have a, also a tick variable that is basically the number of frames that has elapsed from the start of the game. And we will use this for, for some things, but, but currently it just sort of needs to update every t time. Uh, so that's, that's how the state looks. Let's just call that so we have a state to look at while we're looking at other stuff, maybe. And let's get back to what happens when I fire a countermeasure. Oh, probably need to close that down. So when I fire a countermeasure, I take the state as the first argument and a target position, which is a vector on the screen between 0 and 1 for both components. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to find the closest battery that is able to fire this countermeasure. And um, to do that, we have a function here called select battery, which we'll, we will uh, look closer at soon. But essentially, the, the job of this function is to find the battery that is closest to the target point that still has ammunition. And if there might be, you might end up that there is no there is no battery that has ammunition, so you might get nil back here. So the first thing we need to check is that if we, if we didn't get any battery, if we didn't find a suitable battery to fire the countermeasure, there's nothing we can do. We cannot fire the countermeasure, in which case this does nothing. We just take the original state that we put in as the first argument here and return it immediately. Um, I don't know if we actually talked a bit about this before, but um, you can do something called the structuring like this. So this, uh, if you see this, it means that I, I have an argument named state, but I want to extract these two keys from it, the values for those two keys, both the ba batteries and the countermeasures, and I want to have that available to me as a local variable or as local binding. So this is just a shorthand for you know, calling, uh, extracting colon batteries and colon countermeasures from the state and, and using them in a let binding. We're going to be using this a lot, so uh, you'll see it more. OK, we did, if we didn't have a battery, we just returned the state unaltered. But if we found, found a suitable battery that was able to fire the countermeasure, we have a function that creates a countermeasure called count make countermeasure. It takes a position, a start position, and a target. And in this case, we use the position of the battery that was closest as the start position, and we give it a target. Um, now, we take this newly added countermeasure, and we add it, we, we place it at the end using conj, which inserts an element into a list. We place this added countermeasure at the end of the countermeasures list we already had. And we also need to um, decrease the ammo count of the battery that fired the countermeasure. Uh, and we do that by updating the battery in this list that had the index where we, with that, that fired the countermeasure. Because remember, we, we fired from the closest battery. Um, we update the ammo uh, property of that by running the decrease function on it. So we just sort of pipe that in. And what this returns is it, it sort of updates this property deeply inside this list of batteries. The battery at that index, the property on that, decreasing it. And you get back the list of updated batteries. So you, get, you take the batteries and you get back a new list with, with the battery updated in place. And once we're done, that's what needs to happen. We need to take the original state that we fed into the function and we install our new updated state into that. We replace these two properties. So that causes a countermeasure to get fired from the different bits here. And I'm always returning a new new state. I'm, I'm, I'm always producing a new state. I don't modify anything in place, just a new map. And all the stuff that was in the original state is still shared. This doesn't modify the list of active missiles or, it, or um, any of the other properties. So that, that can still be just a reference to that original 
list in this map.